I want to compare and contrast some cases here. Tony Keith, this just happened in uh, Douglas County. You have Colorado man is sentenced for attacking his wife with a samurai sword in a horrific domestic violence case. He's sentenced to 14 years in prison after attacking his wife with a sword. It was handed out earlier this month. Keller pleaded guilty to attempted second-degree murder for the attack that was carried out on December 19, 2019. His wife was able to call 911 during the attack as Keller had used the sword to slice her wrist, severing two arteries and three tendons. The victim was able to escape their home and the deputy used a tourniquet to save her life. Keller was taken into custody following a brief standoff. Attempted second-degree murder? That seems like it's... This defendant, this defendant had previously been charged for felony level domestic violence with the same victim and received treatment. Yet here we are in court sentencing him again after another domestic violence offense, said Senior Deputy District Attorney Valerie Brewster, who prosecuted the case with Deputy District Attorney Sherry Geiger, Giger, Geiger, Tiger, Geiger. The defendant tried to blame alcohol and at times the victim for his behavior. This sentence, is, this sentence is a clear message that the defendant, the defendant alone, is responsible for his actions. But for the strength and courage of this victim, the people would not have been able to hold him accountable. So, okay. Um, I thought this was a little bit different, but we're going to, you know, the show must go on. I was thinking... This guy killed his wife with a sword and he gets 14 years. And then this other person, the fentanyl, you know, the, you had a whole house, like five people that just overdosed on fentanyl. And then you got somebody else that had nothing to do, you know, with those five people dying that just got sentenced to 14 years in jail for being a person that, you know, gave fentanyl. Let's see. Where is Barry Morphew now? The Colorado murder suspect has a new girlfriend. So, okay. That's interesting. It looks like the same. Okay, so Denver police arrest 42 people in one day. Union Station, largest single-day operation to date. Good job, Denver police. I want to see more of that. Man sentenced to 14 years for distributing fentanyl that caused death. That was in Fort Collins. And then we have a Colorado Springs woman charged after a 16-year-old dies from fentanyl overdose. She, you know, looks like she's 20 or something. So man sentenced to 14 years for distributing fentanyl that caused death. Fort Collins. So this caused the death. He had tried to kill his wife with a sword and it wasn't successful. 14 years. That actually sounds like that's, um, I was thinking that's bullshit because the fentanyl thing is more like an accident thing. The person who's taken is the one that's overdosing. So it's like, you know, take two drops or however you take fentanyl and the people, you know, take fucking a hundred drops. You can't. But since marijuana is legal, I want to, you know, put a good face on the damn thing. And uh, if it's regulated, if it's legal, if we're going through all the proper channels and shit, then, you know, something, if there is an overdose, then it would go back to the business that had sold the damn thing. So, you know, whether it's criminal charges or civil liability charges. Ernesto Ibera Jr., Ernesto Ibera Jr. is sentenced to 175 months in prison. Will have three years of supervised release after he serves that time. A Fort Collins man will spend more than 14 years in prison for dealing fentanyl that resulted in death, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office. This is by Rob Lowe and Alex Rose. According to the plea agreement, first responders found a man dead in a Fort Collins home September 2017 next to the man. Police found a syringe, a spoon with liquid and what looked like a partially dissolved blue pill along with a fully intact pill. The medical examiner ruled the man died of acute fentanyl toxicity after lab analysis. It was found the only substance in both pills was fentanyl. Despite the pill's appearance to look like oxycodone, the victim, 26-year-old Ivan Warren, died instantly according to his mom, Robin Rewalt. He had plans and dreams, and absolutely, he never would have left us. He never would have done this if he had known there was fentanyl in that pill. She said, Rewalt said her son used illicit drugs to treat knee pain. He suffered from being a professional motocross racer. Ivan, he was not perfect, but he was a, an amazing young man. He had issues with pain, she said. 
It's a misdemeanor to have fentanyl with that change. After investigation by the Federal Bureau of Investigation in Fort Collins Police, it was found Ibarra sold the man the fentanyl pills, which resulted in his death, and used Facebook to communicate the sale. Ibarra sold the pills to the man the day before he died, according to the investigation. While Ibarra admitted to investigators he sold the drug to another man who later died of fentanyl poisoning, there wasn't enough evidence to prove he dealt the deadly dose. Ibarra was sentenced on February 18th. Fentanyl pills described or disguised as prescription drugs are pervasive and leading to an unprecedented, unprecedented number of overdose deaths. U.S. Attorney Cole Finnegan said even one pill containing fentanyl can end a life. Please stay away from any pill you haven't obtained directly from a pharmacist. Your life depends on it. So, I mean, that's justice, right? 14 years. Goodness gracious. I mean, it led to the death or whatever. So 14 years. These people are, they're trying to trick people thinking that it's oxycodone. So they're making it look like one thing, but it's actually something else. I guess you'll get some kind of high. The fentanyl high feels like it's an oxycodone high or some shit. I mean, they don't seem to be regulating the doses correctly. I mean, if you're going to be deceitful, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense instead of saying... No, I don't have oxycodone. Just say no. Instead, I got, you know, if you're an honest drug dealer. But uh, I'm happy with marijuana. I'm, I don't need any other drugs. So the war on drugs, I'm opposed to it on, you know, principle. But um, like I said, I'm happy that uh, I don't have to ride dirty when I buy marijuana. It's my one vice. I smoke a little bit of weed, and that's that's it. Just quit cigarettes. Don't even drink alcohol. Maria Cecilia Davis Conchi has been charged with four felonies, one misdemeanor for giving drugs to three underage boys, but has not been charged directly in the death of the boy. So a Colorado Springs woman is in jail to be in charge with dealing drugs to minors, including an alleged fatal dose of fentanyl to a 16-year-old boy. The 4th Judicial District Attorney's Office declined to comment. There's an overdose death at a home on Tippleton Gap Road, 9.25 a.m. July 31st of this year. They went to the basement. They found the boy, de they found the boy dead and his body blue. They say there's a piece of cut straw used to smoke narcotics and drug paraphernalia in the boy's drawer. Uh, drawer. They found two blue pills they suspected to be laced with fentanyl. The father told police that his son did drugs such as Xanax and marijuana and just began using fentanyl. Davis Conchi went by the name of CC. Xanax. Davis Conchi sold him Xanax first. The boy said they knew the drugs were fentanyl pills and not Percocet. They bought four pills for 40 bucks. When police spoke on the phone with Davis Conchi, she told them she knew who was responsible for the boy's death and urged them to arrest somebody else. But that name was redacted in the affidavit. So that's interesting.
That's CC.